Hi, I'm Julian Goodacre, bagpipe maker from Scotland. I've been making bagpipes now for over half my life. I've played professionally and given lectures and tours. Bagpipes are a fascinating uh, instrument. Most people think they're Scottish, but actually Scotland got them only about three or four hundred, four hundred years ago. Uh, they're found throughout the Middle East and throughout Europe and there are many different shapes and sizes. Look at my website at the different ones I make. They're a strange uh, instrument in that they only have a very limited range of notes that they play. They only play a fixed volume and they can't actually play silence at all in between the notes. They've got lots of challenges and the challenges are worth it and that's what makes it such an exciting instrument. Well there are four main parts of a bagpipe. The blowpipe, the chanter, and the drone and the bag. To get air into the pipe you blow through a blowpipe and I'm taking it out here to show there's a little rubber valve there so which then clacks shut under the pressure so you've got it trapped there. You have a drone, this is the drone which just plays one note and you can tune that drone and I'll show you that uh, in a minute and then you have the chanter which is what you play the melody on. Now the drone, I'm going to take it out and expose the reed. The reed looks a little bit like a saxophone reed. It has a little plastic tongue which vibrates. In fact, if I suck it, you might be able to see it vibrating. And that's what makes the noise. Uh, that generates the noise. And then it's put in this tube, which is a variable length, so you can have it low. Or you can tune it up. So it's a bit like a trombone, the, the way it works there. Then you have the chanter. I'll show you this chanter, which is what the melody is actually played on. And on the Leicestershire small pipes, the fingering I use is just one finger off at any time, or the thumb. Much like a other woodwind instrument. The sound is generated with a double reed, more like a bassoon or oboe reed, uh, <coughs> which fits in there and it doesn't play a very stable note, so you have to play it at an even pressure. If you blow too hard, it's going to sound too high. And if you blow too low, it's going to sound horrible. So you have to play it at a constant, constant pressure. And that lives inside that so you have the whole <coughs> both the reeds in connection with the bag. Now the bag and this is something that people find difficult to understand the bag is a reservoir of air. The pressure doesn't actually come from you blowing it comes from you squeezing it. So I'm gonna <coughs> blow it inflate it and then squeeze it. The sound won't be very nice at this stage because the drone isn't tuned and I'll explain how to tune it in a minute. So I blow into the bag and then with my, my fingers over the hole I squeeze. So there's actually a lot of air in the bag. As you notice the pressure is coming from me squeezing. But the problem is, or the challenge I should say, is to get more air into the bag without lowering the pressure or raising the pressure. You have to get more air into the bag while you're still squeezing. And this involves a technique whereby you're, while you're blowing more air in, you're squeezing in a downward direction with this elbow, but you're actually lifting it. It sounds strange. You, you can think of it as blowing your arm up, you know, you're blowing it up there. And this is so difficult to describe in words. When I'm blowing air in, I can't just lift my arm up because that'll reduce the pressure. What I'm doing is kind of blowing my arm up. So the pressure is in that direction, but the arm is moving in that direction. <laughs> So you're constantly topping up the bag with air as it's being lost through the drone.
Now the chanter reed is very pressure sensitive. So it alters a lot how hard you or lightly you press it. The drone stays very stable. So the whole knack of playing the pipes is to learn to produce a stable pressure. But the trick is you have to blow more air in to replenish the air that's coming out. Now finally I'm going to tune the drone which involves raising or lowering the length of the drone uh, the, the drone note until it's perfectly in tune with that bottom note which in this case is a C note. That sounds well in tune. Now when you start playing you're almost certainly going to uh, press too weakly or too strongly. Sounds horrible. Sounds horrible. You've got to get that's the high pressure, the low pressure, and you have to get that constant pressure. To start with, when you're learning, and we've all been through this, the pressure goes up and down and up and down, and you sound like a rather unfortunate uh, <coughs> animal struggling. But eventually, as you practice, and you practice 10 minutes at a time, the pressure variation gets less and less until you can lock solid, like uh, you've heard me do. So, and once, once you've done that, you can then start playing the top note. And practice with the top note and with the fifth note and the third note. And that's th the way you start to play. Most people, and I have to admit I did this as well, uh, when the first time I ever played a pipe I started blowing into it, it sounded horrible and I tried to play a tune. Don't bother playing a tune to start with because you've just got to get, it's like a bicycle, you've got to learn to, to uh, <coughs> play this, to balance it. And once you've got that then you can forget all about it. It becomes just like breathing. It's a natural process.